Hello everyone. Today I'm going to continue my series of exposés on these cheap Chinese uh, rechargeable 18650 cells. Uh, you can see here I have another pair. These are the, the Skywolf I 5000 milliamp uh, cells and uh, they claim that they have 5000 milliamp uh, hours of storage capability and I bought two of them from China for $3.97. Uh, you can get the the two for uh, five dollars and sixty nine cents with the charger. Uh, I didn't bother. I already had one of these chargers. I tested it in my previous video with the Skywolf I fifty eight hundred milliamp cell, which totally failed. Uh, you can watch that video. I'll probably link it at the end of this video as well. Um, and this charger that uh, you can get for an extra dollar seventy two on top of the cells uh, overcharged those cells by uh, 0 0.5 volts which if you know anything about 18650 cells, will eventually destroy the cell. So don't waste your money on the charger. And uh, I'll show you, uh, well, I'm gonna test these cells out and uh, you know see what their actual um, capacity is. Now well, you may be wondering, well, how do I know they're not 5,000 milliamp hours? Okay, here's the educational part of this video. There is no 18650 cell currently available on earth that has over 3,600 milliamp hours of storage capability. So if you see some cheap cell on uh, you know, eBay or on uh, Amazon, and it's claiming 4,000 milliamp hours, well, you know they're lying to you because the current world record holder for the most amount of capacity is a uh, Panasonic NCR 18650G. Here it is right here, as you can see. Uh, you know, 18650 cell, you can see it here. Uh, 3600 milliamp hours Panasonic NCR 18650G and uh, it is the world record holder you will not find currently a bigger a, a higher capacity cell so um, you know that's how you know now these things change from time to time I've been watching these uh, 18650 cells now for about two years and they've gone up from 32 to 34 and now 3600 milliamp hours in the maximum capacities so they seem to jump by about 200 milliamp hours every time they jump but they don't jump for any more than that and so again the next jump would probably be about 3800 milliamp hours so anything over 3600 currently and in the future in the near future uh over that you have to seriously suspect that it's not a true uh, claim it's it's a it's a lie and in these in this case I'm looking at two five thousand milliamp cells here uh, you know when this when the world record holder is actually 3600 milliamp hours so we know that's not true so let's see how uh, bad these cells actually are so I'm gonna test them out and uh, see what happens uh, I want to go back to these NCR 3600 milliamp hours too because here's another aspect of these cells uh, in comparison to those cheap Chinese cells. Here's an Olight 3600 based around 3600 milliamp hours based around that uh, Panasonic NCR 18650G and you can see here it says 3600 milliamp hours. This is a protected cell so it's got some protection circuitry in it and uh, they claim that these are protected cells too from uh, Skywolf Eye. Um, my last set didn't have any protections in them at all but I will uh, you know, at the end of the charging and discharging tests on these, I will uh, destroy one of these to see if there's any protection circuit inside it. I highly doubt it. Uh, anyway, you can see here that at 3,600 milliamp hours, one of these cells is going for 21.99. Okay, not cheap. It's certainly not three dollars and uh, 95 cents for two of them. So now I'm gonna look at another cell here. This is the Orb Orbtronic 3,600 milliamp hour cell. It is also uh, based around the Panasonic NCR 18650G. And as you can see, it says it's claiming a 3600 milliamp uh, storage capability. Uh, you know, obviously, it is. And you can see here that says protection integrated circuit, you know, made in Japan, uh, you know, 3600 milliamp cell made in Japan. So the Panasonic cells are, are made in Japan. So that's why they're claiming that on this cell. Now they could be assembling these in China, but you know, the heart of this, the, the, the cells are being made in Japan. So that's another tell, right? So again, not to disparage this, there may be a Chinese manufacturer of 3,600 milliamp hours with Panasonic cells that's totally legit. I'm not saying they're all a ripoff. I'm saying the cheap ones are. So 
let's go uh, back over here to um, what we're looking at. Our, our cells, the 18650 uh, 5000 milliamp uh, batteries. And what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to weigh them up and reference them on my uh, known good 2000 milliamp hour a harvested brand new cell from a brand new battery pack a laptop battery pack this is an unprotected cell so i'm going to compare it in size and weight and uh, then i'm going to uh, read the voltages off of these see what they came in uh, at from the package and after that i'm going to fully charge these and then do uh, several i'd say three to four discharge tests to get a, a, a real good reading on what the actual capacity of the uh, uh, you know uh, sky wolf i 5,000 milliamp hour cells are. So let's get uh, uh, down to the physical. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, like I said, uh, compare them, weigh them, and then I'm gonna actually, uh, you know, show you what's uh, printed on the outside of these uh, cells because it's uh, actually quite funny. Let's start by weighing up my uh, 18650 2,000 milliamp hour cell, which I've tested. And as you can see there, it says 2,033 milliamps. So it's a little bit better than what its rated capacity is. And I, I harvested this out of a laptop uh, battery pack. So here's what a 2000 milliamp uh, unprotected cell weighs 43.8 grams or let's change the mode here to ounces 1.545 ounces. So, you know, you get an idea. Let's try one of the uh, Sky Wolf Eyes 5000 milliamp cells. And let's take it back to grams, 36.0 grams. So uh, considerably lighter. Let's uh, change the mode again to ounces, 1.269 ounces. So that's one of the cells. Let's uh, see if they actually uh, have any consistency across uh, two. So that's 36. Let's go with the next one. Yeah, not bad, 36.2, 36.1, almost exactly the same. So at least they're consistent there, 1.7, so 1.273 ounces. Um, and as a comparison, the 5,800 milliamp uh, cell from Sky Wolf Eye, the ones that I tore apart and basically found out had less than 1,200 milliamp hours in them. Um, yeah, basically the same weight. Let's see, oop, wait for that to zero. What do we got? Yep, yeah, 36.0. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm going to get the same capacity out of these uh, cells as well. But, you know, there you go. There's the weight. Uh, they're both pretty equal. Zero to, uh, okay, let's go. 35.7. Sorry. 1.259 ounces. 1.259 ounces, exactly the same. 35.7 so consistent in that uh, regard um, now let's get on to sizing sizing is exactly the same there's a 2000 milliamp hour right beside it as you can see here it is let me see, there we go 2000 milliamp hour um, basically the same size except for the button head it's a little it sticks out further because this has a flat top uh, but other than that diameter is more or less the same I would say exactly the same yeah pretty well so physically the right size and the right shape so we're good there now let's take a look at what's written on these things let me zoom in on that so we can actually see what's going on okay well sky sky wolf eye that's the, the name brand we're dealing with 5,000 milliamp hour 7.3.7 uh, volts rechargeable of course and then uh, we have a warning and the warning says the voltage uh, of full charge and cutoff discharge is 4.2 volts and 2.75 volts as you can see there okay and then we get the uh, don't heat incinerate or reverse polarity well that goes for any 18650 cell we've got the negative and the positive so you know which end is which you know pretty straightforward there keep going made in china recyclable I don't know and then we get into the next thing rechargeable battery with NK whatever that means re, re discharging protection circuit so it's claiming to have some sort of 
discharging or recharging protection circuit. It's as you can see there. Okay, low discharge charge rate, no memory effect. Low recurring operation cost, short circuit and overcurrent protection. Right? Now, weird here that it goes from overcurrent and then gives you a capital P on protection, but you know. Anyway, sheaf life. Okay, sheaf life. Around 10 years. Enciromentally friendly. Yeah, if that isn't starting to ring some bells in your head, I don't know what would. Um, so, again, I, this is the exact same uh, printing I had on the other uh, black and green uh, battery. They used, obviously, the same computer format or the same thing. Uh, 10, sorry, 18650 lithium uh, L ion rechargeable bat bat brie see that <laughs> there's the funny part rechargeable bat bat brie now notice that it's all one word rechargeable bat brie okay so they're making a cell and they don't you know they can't even get the spelling of battery correct bat brie so yeah uh don't know about you but that should definitely be ringing some bells in your head okay so there's the outside packaging obviously it's uh, a little messed up and uh, it's kind of weird because most 18650 cells that you see uh, go from 4.2 volts to 2.50 volts uh, my charger doesn't go to 2.75 it goes to 2.70 so we'll be using 2.70 I don't think that 0.5 is gonna make any difference so uh, next, let's test the voltage on these and see what we got. Let's see what kind of juice to give them at the bat at the uh, factory. Uh, so this, these are straight out of the package. They were wrapped, so heat shrink uh, wrapped. So yeah, 4.0 volts, not bad. Let's see what the other one has. Three point nine two volts. So. Uh, again, a decent amount of voltage on those uh, cells right out of the package, straight from China. That's uh, that's actually looking cool. So at this point, uh, we've done the testing as far as uh, the physical goes. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is use my Nikkor uh, i4 IntelliCharger. This is the Nikkor here, and uh, I highly recommend getting something like this. You know, you don't necessarily need to get a Nikkor IntelliCharger. Uh, by the way, I will put a link to all this stuff that I use, my my uh, meter, my scale, uh, and my IMAX B6 uh, uh, discharge tool that I'm going to show you next, also in the video description below. So, like I said, you don't have to go with an IntelliCharger i4 or even an iCor product, but go with a reputable charger uh, so that there isn't any issue. Don't go with these cheap things that they sell sell you for a dollar seventy-two. I mean, seriously, this this is. You know, on top of these two cells, I could have spent an extra dollar seventy-two and gotten this thing here, this charger, which has no protection on it for inverting the cell. So you can plug it in backwards and turn it on and blow the cell, basically. Uh, nothing to stop you there. The actual charger will do that. Uh, also, it will over this one here. I tested it. It will overcharge your batteries, and then you know, even if you have a legitimate battery like this and you stick it into this charger, you will ruin this battery by putting it in this charger. So, do yourself a favor. Don't buy these garbage chargers. Uh, get yourself something decent. You know, this is about $20 I think I paid for it. Well worth it. It charges every battery I have. So, you know, uh, not just the 18650s. It does triple A's, it does double A's, it does, you know, you name it. It does them all. Um, you know, and uh, nickel metal hydride, uh, NICAD, all of them. It just automatically senses them and it charges them up. It does a great job. So I'm gonna put them in here, charge these up. And uh, when we're done with, uh, charging them up, uh, I'm going to put them in my IMAX B6, which is right here, and uh, discharge them fully and find out how many uh, milliwatt hours they actually uh, are capable of storing. I'm going to start the discharge uh, by first testing the voltage out of the charger on the cell right out of the charger, that is. So here's, I believe, cell number one, yes. And uh, let's see how much voltage we got on it. 4.16. 
4.16. So we're starting at 4.16. Uh, I'm using the nickel metal hydride prog uh, program on the uh, LiPro char charger because uh, the uh, charge uh, program for lithium ion uh, on this charger goes all the way from 420 down to 250 and there's no way to modify it but on the nickel metal hydride uh, the program you can actually modify where the cutoff uh, discharge point is and I've done that so let's uh, go here and there's nickel metal hydride and we're going to oops okay and then we're gonna go to discharge and you see here I'm discharging it to 2.70 volts I can't go down to 2.75 as recommended on the cell so uh, let's do that and we'll go from there So I took the bottom and the top off the cell and as you can see here this is what's left it's just the standard lithium ion cell inside I guess and uh, you can see the tabs this is a negative tab here and on the top um, somewhere there there is a positive tab and that positive tab goes to this button top here and the negative goes to the bottom here right and you know what you can see here right off the bat is no circuitry anywhere neither on the battery or on the top or the bottom okay that's that's what the first thing you can see the second thing you can see is there's no venting on this uh, cell uh, Panasonic uh, claims to have a vent on theirs in case uh, you know you short it or something goes wrong with the battery it'll actually allow you allow the gases to be released through the, the actual cell but here you look at the top this is the seal it had a rubber seal all the way around it it's basically an insulator to keep the negative from uh, contacting the positive and shorting the cell out and then you see this button top here and uh, that notch in it is one I did when I was using my hacksaw to cut uh, the top out of the uh, uh, shroud here because I wanted to see if there was any venting on it without destroying the actual top cap and the top cap, cap has no vent on it whatsoever uh, you know that slit there is what I put in it, it wasn't there originally so uh, you know more things to worry about on this cell not more you know so there you go zero protection to uh, boot there's no uh, and 76.88 uh, percent less than uh, declared uh, capacity on the first cell and 78.62 percent less than declared capacity on the second cell all right that's my review uh, my thorough review on the sky wolf i 5000 milliamp hour cell can't recommend it unprotected uh, junky battery with uh, no venting no protection circuitry at all even though it claims to have it uh, you know uh, and uh, 76 to 78 percent less than the claimed uh, uh, rating for uh, storage capacity so total junk you can see those stats up here the first cell had 1156 milliamp hours with 76.88 less than claimed capacity cell number two very similar 1069 milliamp hours ending up uh, with 78.62 percent less than the claimed capacity total junk don't buy these right and if you do buy them understand that you're getting in a totally unprotected cell and unvented cell of uh, lesser than you know well I would say questionable quality so uh, that's it for my review on those cells uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way click on the bottom right of the screen and uh, give me a thumbs up uh, for the video that helps my video and my channel uh, also there'll be a link for the gear that I used during this video at Amazon in the video description below uh, and uh, on top of all this I want to thank you all for watching this video and for your time.